I don't know what this commentator is watching. He says all his deliveries have been good. I don't know about that. Oh, no! Oh, no! I don't believe it! I don't believe what I'm seeing! Have we actually scored? Oh, no! I don't know what to do with myself! Oh, I take it all back! I honestly take it all bloody back! I honestly don't know. It's, it's like Charlie Mulgrew has been reborn into a little German wizard. I honestly cannot believe it. a first win in a long, long time in their first goal in over five games. So they're going to get all of it in just one second. If you're new, where you been? Smash your subscribe button. You can bang everything. All things Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We got it all here, boys. Under one roof. This feels like a lifetime that since not only did we score, but also since we last won. And it's been a monstrous win uh, today against high-flying, also fellow playoff chasing QP Bloody R. We'll take a look at all of it in a minute. Of course, shows my VIP set the patrons guys thank you very much of course behind the scenes i really do appreciate it but of course if you're new make sure you smash your subscribe and also check out the links down below so let's revisit it of course it was the early door kickoff uh, for blackburn rovers uh at ewood uh, and we came out on top with a one nil win that's right goodness gracious me it's been a long long time the one and only goal from Raider kadra uh, of course on the 77th minute did he mean it i don't know to be honest with you, i don't really care it was a free kick way out wide it was kind of like a short corner ish but of course it was all kadra uh it was it reminded us of a, uh, of course, a Charlie Mulgrew special. Of course, straight from the corner, straight from the free kick, right in the back of the net. And the keeper, Marshall, had no chance. Goodness gracious me, spaghetti fingers uh, there. As you can see in the stats there, boss uh, possession was bossed by QBR. 56% of the time, 44% for us. Back to our old stuff there. But when we did have possession, we were going forward. Uh, we had 10 shots on the night. They had seven. Uh, two of them were off target. This is that's good. Of course, made the, made the least... Uh, the keeper or the defence work uh, for their efforts for uh, for today, and of course uh, uh, seven sh shots seven shots saved by. Um both keepers, of course, the QBR. Deng in the first half, Marshall in the second. We had nine corners to the one, but we didn't really make any use of those corners. Uh, but ultimately, we came out at the end of it with the result, with the goal, with the win. And that is a massive, massive win. Not only is it a win, it's a win against a fellow playoff chaser side. We've got to do more of this. Uh, if, but the thing is, I don't think there's many games left for us to play up against playoff contenders. We've had played a whole bunch of them in recent times. West Brom, Sheffield United. Uh, who else did we play quite recently? But anyway, uh, monstrous result get the three points and move the bloody chains. So let's take a look at some of the other stats, the detailed stats then coming at you. Uh, of course, uh, this is a both home and away here, or, or both first and second half. Uh, we, uh, they had more passes than they, than they did, of course. Uh, they were better, uh, well, of course, uh, duels on the ground. We were better in the air, 17 aerial duels won, uh, and of course, more interceptions as well. We had more corner kicks, of course, more shots, but of course, uh, the main thing is getting that, of course, one and only uh, stat that matters is the goals. So let's take a look at the first half stats then. Uh, big chances, we both had one big chance at the first half and we both missed it. Uh, we had three shots inside the box. They had just the two. Um, and again, possession was a favourite of QPR. But that has been our story this season. We've not been the possession-based side. Uh, when, of course, last season we were the possession-based side, but it didn't get us anywhere. So we're back to winning ways. Back, of course, with the three points. And, of course, uh, giving us right back the momentum that we need heading into a very, very different uh, month of, of March. So ended the, the month of February with the W. Massive win in the end. Second half stats. Then, of course, come catch up. More possession again for, for, for QPR. 59% compared to our 41, but we had more shots than they did when, of course, we had the ball. They had more, a bigger chance, though, to rectify it. Uh, we scored, of course, our chance uh, as well. So three shots inside the box, three shots outside the box. Uh, and again, uh, the uh, aerial duels were won by us in the second half. Nine to their seven. They had more duels on the ground, 34 of them compared to our 25 as well. So, yeah, well done to Rovers. Kudos for Mowbray. Did make a couple of changes. I don't know if uh, if they were all... There was two major ones, really. Rothwell didn't feature, and uh, Buckaroo 
was dropped. So chances are we might not see him back for the next game either. Why would you? Why would you change it up? You'd stick with that front three, I think, uh, for the next game. And of course, a uh, good cameo as well from the bench from Hedges. Speaking of the lining lineup, then take a look at it. Of course, this was the lineup Kaminsky between the sticks. The, the oldest man on the f well, it wasn't the oldest man on the field, uh, but the, uh, one of the oldest men on the field. But of course, between the sticks, Wharton, Van Heck, and Leonard make up a back three, a very, very good back three as well. Travis, of course, in midfield alongside Bradley Johnson, the veteran there. Uh, he was all right, wasn't he? He did, he did his bit. Of course, nothing flash from him, but uh, he did a lot of the donkey work to, uh, to keep things moving. Nyambi was uh, stretched off second half, so we don't think we'll see him at least for the next uh, month or so. So I think he's going to be out on the injury table as well. Harry Pickering, of course, on the left hand side. Kadra, of course, match winner. Gallagher uh, and, of course, Dolan on uh, the, the, uh, the top, top end of the field. As for the substitutions, then, shall we? Uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, we did see Zifu coming on. Of course, he'll probably get some game time next a couple of weeks anyway. Giles as well coming on and Ryan Hedges for uh, some minutes as well. I thought he would look lively. Didn't really get the shot off, or I don't think anyway. We'll have a look at the shot grid just a second. Of course, take a look at QPR. Of course, Deng between the sticks. He was substituted at halftime. Barbe, Dickie and Dunn. I made another back through with Field and Hendrick in midfield uh, with Adoma on the right, uh, Jajobo on the left, Johansson, uh, Ilish Chair and Willock up top, opting as a centre forward. Uh, they did see the likes of Marshall coming on, McCallum as well and Andre Gray uh, to little or no avail as well. Let's take a look at, of course, the match ratings. And these are not my match ratings. These are the match ratings of a third party. But, of course, the third party did give the man of the match two. I'm looking at it. 7.6, I see, over there for Jeff Hendrick. Uh, um, I'm not too sure about that. Catch up with a 7.5. I think he should deserve to get the man of the match, maybe. Van Heck as well, 7.3. And, of course, some good saves from Thomas Kaminsky as well. But I don't know what. 7.6 for Hendrick. What did he do? What did he bloody do? I think it was a little bit a little bit, uh, a little bit, bit weird uh, ratings there. Um, to be honest with you, I think we deserved a win. I don't want to be a, 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 a cocky son of a bitch, but I thought we did. Um, don't get me wrong. QPR were, were, were in this game. They were. They had some real good chances themselves to get this goal, goal, goal on the back, ball in the back of the net. But, of course, they failed to, to, to make it count in the end. Down the bottom there, you can see the uh, stats where all things happen. Uh, let's take a look at the shot grid then, shall we? Of course, Rovers represented by the orange. Uh, quite a lot of shots. Uh, long rangers. A couple of few of them in the box as well. And again, Kadra with three of them. Two of them for Dolan. Two of them for Giles. Nothing for Hedges there. Uh, Pickering and Johnson with Lennon as well with a shot. As for QPR, the shots coming from Ilish Che. Had a couple of them. Gray had one from the bench. Hendrick, uh, Odebajo and uh, Adoma with Dickey as well. Long rangers as well. As for the heat maps, of course, Rovers represented by the top graph there. Of course, both flanks. Uh, uh, being uh, highly optimised as for QPR, a lot of coverage and that's a typical thing we get with Blackburn Rovers. But for me, uh, yeah, not bad. Not, uh, well, in fact, a, a tremendous result. We needed this, of course, monstrous game next week against Fulham where we're probably going to lose. So we would have, if we'd lost this today, it, we could have probably had a, a, a stretch of three defeats in the row, which of course would not do the confidence any good. We're going to go to Fulham now with, of course, our tails up and maybe just maybe get something at it. Uh, but we'll see about that. Anyway, um, of course, let's take a look at what the gaffers had to say. Here's Tony Mowbray with his thoughts and opinions after the game. And, of course, he's smiling. Um, and probably relief, you know, we've been on a journey of, of pretty good performances, I feel. And I think today was another pretty good performance. And sometimes in football, you don't get what you deserve. You work really, really hard. Um, and I think they've done that, you know, over recent weeks. We had Swansea over against Forest, um, Sheffield United the other night. and. and got nothing from them games where we probably deserve some from every game but um and i think we deserved the three points today i think it'd be difficult to deny it i think we played against a, a team that have got lots of threats that we nullified generally today um and we could have scored more we should have been in front at half time thankfully we scored maybe a, a mistake from the keeper but you know we played against a good team and um but we'll take the points put them in the bag move on we've got three of the next four at home which it doesn't feel like we've been at home for a long time and um, today's good to get back to winning ways at Ewood. It's a, it's, a, it's a fortress for us really and if we can get good points from the three games coming up at home then um, you know we, we, we'll keep ticking along in the top six hopefully. What does it say about Reda Kadra in particular, the fact that he had those two chances early on, he had the penalty saved in midweek but he's prepared to, to step up yeah. and, and, and shoot from that free kick in that position? As you say about him, he's a, he's a fantastic kid. He's, um, I think his talent is, you know, I can't teach him much about dribbling and how fast and powerful he is. I think yeah, and he, he practices so much on that right foot, dead balls. Um, you know, you can't get him off the training ground some days, but um, 
Yeah, listen, he, he, he's not our player. He's, he's a Brighton or Albion player, and they'll watch that today and see the threat he carries, the individual threat. I think he's he's learning at this club how to play out of possession. I think how to close down passing lines, when to press the ball, when to sit off, when to screen in front, and then when to be ready to break on transition when they win it back and get it to his feet. He's he's a, he's a very very good player, and um, we're delighted he's here with us, helping us on this journey. Clear downside today, the injury to Ryan Niambi. Yeah. What, what can you tell us about it? Well, he's, he's in the dressing room with a big brace on his knee at the moment. I think it's a medial knee ligament. I think we'll find out what grade it is. He'll get scanned. And um, yeah, listen, let's hope he's not a bad one. I think, you know, Ryan is not a lad who's had lots of injuries. And so maybe he's a, he's a bit spooked by it, really. He can feel pain in, his, in the inside of his knee. It's a medial knee ligament injury. The scan will tell us whether it's, you know, a six to eight weeks or it's a, a, a one to two week. We'll wait and see. But um, no, fingers crossed for Ryan. He's been really solid for us all year and um, we've asked him to play centre average we did at West Brom the other week and he did very well but um, yeah we'll, we'll see I think I think Zifuku came on for him he's a real talented boy came on another on loan from Hertha Berlin and um, if Ryan can't he misses a few weeks then, then Zifuku's ready and, and, and more than capable How do you see where you are in the promotion race now with full of away to come next Saturday? Yeah, yeah, but I, I think if everybody, I mean, I'm sure you do what you still do, everybody's got everybody to play, really. The top six are all playing each other in different periods over these last dozen or so games. Um, we just take the next one as it comes. And what I know is that we've got three games on the bounce at home after that. And there's lots of points for us, hopefully, to try and collect. I know they're all difficult, but uh, our record suggests that we're difficult to beat at home. And um, we'll just keep ticking along, adding the points up. I think somebody said we've got as many points now with 12 games to go as we got last season so hopefully there's a lot more points still there for us and we can get up into the to the middle 70s or even higher and uh, at least try and get in the playoffs i know it's difficult of course because there's a lot of really good teams clamoring for it it's not as if well, seven teams are adrift or are sort of pushed on above everybody else there right down to halfway and below everyone's got a chance and so we have to find consistency and pick up points and keep going and and nobody gets carried away here we all expect to work really hard and stick together thank you Tony cheers thank you Meanwhile, what's been said on social media? Let's take a little look then, shall we? Of course, Adam Satuki said, huge, get in there. What a crucial three points. I had my doubts, but the team did us proud today. And Redder has some balls to keep going like he did. And he got re 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 rewards. A fully deserved win. We love you, Rovers. We do. Solstice Inc. said, maybe we should play on Sky every week. <laughs> Seriously speaking, what a performance. Uh, we may lack a clinical uh, cutting edge. We may squander up opportunities. But these lads for effort, work rate, and the best in the league. And uh, Mr. Murray, positive. All going out. Uh, ben, a... Uh, a.k.a. Gilarossi Blue said absolutely brilliant performance so proud of every single one of those players and Moby they all played their parts today, including Gallagher we have <laughs> that's a bit of a weird one including Gallagher we have to start Dolan Kadra from now on so much more lively today I won't be too gutted if Brero needs a few weeks of rest uh, Phil uh, Mr. Bishi said if we make the playoffs if there's some way we can avoid matches being shown on Sky uh, we'll see about that Barnes said if I wish we could play like that all the time if we had a real prolific goal scorer um, alongside Diaz I'd be fight frightening how many goals we'd score we need that good win good goal let's push on and put this dreadful month behind us Chris Martin not that one but this one said that win was no more than we deserve we were excellent today if anything I'm amazed with that we only ended up winning 1-0 uh, we've got that first goal and win now where we need to build on that result uh, kick it off forward meanwhile uh, Matthew Stein just said the goal and celebrations here just at, uh, epitomise everything about this side a lesser team would have been floored by that sucker punch at Sheffield United but they never give up and deliver some moments of real quality never seen um, a more deserved win uh, meanwhile, Ryan Hiltred over at the Rovers chat said, what a response, what a group of players. In truth, game should have been less nervy than that, but it doesn't matter how you do it, you just do it. Players left, nothing on the pitch. Huge result for their season. Proud Rovers. Rishki Shishki said, get in. So happy for Kadra after Wednesday night. Good performance, great win. Uh, ben the Boss Jackson, of course. Rovers win, very hard played out win. A deserved win, well done, lads. Daniel Slater said, one of the old Rovers sees mafioso there. Uh, you couldn't write that. Well, that was in regards to the goal, but he did say this. The only difference between our win today uh, the past two three games is we won one nil the performance ha have been there just not the goals well in boys well indeed uh, for Daniel rocking the streets there over at uh Eddie Park, of course, maybe we'll get to some fan cam from him later on. But that's, of course, the state of play over on social media. This, of course, are the results from today's action, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't want to lie to you, I am actually recording it before the results come in. But 
I'm going to be a smart bastard and put the actual results in. So they'll be there just, uh, of course. But the real result really is Blackburn Rovers' big win over QPR. So it can be said here, guys, of course, I am recording this before the end of the games here, so we may end up being in fourth, uh, but of course, as of recording, we are in third, so we'll see uh, where we are at the end of it. Oh, wow, wow, we are, but of course, uh, Barnsley, uh, probably a bottom, I don't know, I really don't know, we'll see, we'll see, um, yeah, spoiler alert, I have no idea. Of course, let's take a look at the games that are going to take place uh, next week. Of course, uh, one game in, in, in midweek. Of course, Cardiff up against Derby. Uh, of course, that'll be on Tuesday. Bit of catch up for them. But then, uh, of course, games are on Friday all the way through to Saturday. And Rovers are yet again the early kickoff over at Craven Cottage. Uh, but Huddersfield to take on Peterborough. Uh, Sheffield take on Forest. That's a bit of a zinger zinger right there. Bristol City against Birmingham. Derby against Barnsley. Relegation six-pointer. Hull City against West Brom. QBR against Cardiff, Stoke against Blackpool, Middlesbrough against Luton Town, Preston against Bournemouth, and Bristol City against Birmingham, Swansea Coventry, and running up there, running up against Millwall. That is it, guys. That is the tail of the tape. Be sure to give the video some love and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe. Of course, check out the links down below. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Twitch, I'm on Facebook, and I'm also on Patreon. But of course, that is pretty much it. Big win for us. Monstrous, of course, mojo changer for Blackburn Rovers. And of course, hopefully, we can build on this and maybe just maybe uh, frighten the world of football next week with a, with a shock result down London way. But that's it. Be sure to give the video some love. And of course, we'll have uh, hopefully a vlog later on and also uh, some fan cams on the boys. Um, and also we're recording a podcast on Sunday. So make sure you come back. I think it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. But until then, make sure you smash the whole subscribe, smash the thumbs up. I'll see you soon for the next one, boys. We're done. We got the win. Thank heavens for that. We're out.